Sir, shall we start? Yeah, whenever you are ready. Sure, sir. Yeah, we are waiting just for one or two minutes, then we'll start. So very good work. Good morning to everyone. Uh, today on this auspicious occasion of Gandhi Jayanti and uh, the birth anniversary of Lal Bahadur Shastri Ji, we are hosting this impact lecture series, which is funded by AICT. The Ministry of uh, Education is supporting us in hosting this impact lecture series on innovation. So <clears throat> as far as the IIC MIT is concerned, we have taken a great leap in uh, formula, formally introducing innovation and entrepreneurship as one of the very important wings at MIT. And uh, uh, we have introduced IIC MIT in year 2018. Since then, we are consistently hosting online and offline events. And uh, those are into the promotion of innovation and entrepreneurship activities onto the campus and everything every step we are taking up and at, as a result of same since year 2018 we have established our incubation center pre-incubation center and different wings who are supporting innovation and entrepreneurship at different levels to continue the this culture of innovation and entrepreneurship we must must understand that what is innovation and how this innovation could be taken to next level that level actually defines to what extent, to what level, to what refinement we are talking about. If today we are talking about two products, we compare their appearance, their possibilities, the range of services they are going. But the first thing what appeals is whether it is differentiating or not. And there are different factors. Many of us feel that innovation is something very new but sometimes we see that only incremental activities add much value to the innovation. So are different, different, different things all together in the market. And today we have very eminent speaker, Mr. Muthu Singaram sir, who is CEO of STIC, IIT Madras, who is with us to help us understand what is innovation. Sir is a very seasoned mentor who is mentoring different startups into the domain of healthcare. And sir is actively involved with mentoring different banks as well in their financial modeling. Sir is one of the person 
who is helping dst dbt carve out the best innovations in the country through their promotional programs so without wasting much time i am inviting muthu sir to start the session thank you so much sir thank you shashwat for the introduction can can you all allow me to share the my screen okay thank you got it you able to see my screen which says the bottom line in innovation yes sir okay thank you so much thank you for having me here um let's get started the first of the sessions is going to be in innovation but i have done a little bit addition to it the question i have asked for the innovation part is the bottom line in innovation which comes first so often that is a confusion in many organizations so let's go through this in that manner innovation and bottom line so as always we like to spend some time around 30 seconds or so for you to just make a note why have you come this morning i mean as sashwat says it's a saturday morning auspicious morning why have you taken the time to be here for the next two hours so you can just jot down a few things not a few things a couple of things you'd like to achieve this morning and hopefully we'll be able to help you achieve those so i'm going to keep quiet for 30 seconds Okay, let's continue. Innovation is probably the most overused word. It's probably misused and misunderstood. You see this word being used everywhere. People say innovative menu, innovative books, innovative, 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 innovative. So it's probably overused, misused, and misunderstood. However, the word I in innovation. is irritating is irresistible above all is extremely interesting that's why we spend hours talking about it now what is bottom line bottom line is the net earning net income or earning per share very crucial for organizations any action that may increase or decrease your net earning or a company overall profit that's what the bottom line is often companies only talk about the top line and forget about the bottom line but however company survival depends on the bottom line of it and one has to improve this by growing its net earnings or reducing its cost so this is how you deal with bottom line and innovation has a very close link to the bottom line now based on in wikipedia they explain bottom line is this is referring to the bottom describing the relative location of the net income figure so this is the last line on your income statement so most companies aim to improve their bottom line through two simultaneous method one by growing in revenue and increasing efficiency so this is the definition of that now a quick question what is innovation years and years ago when i first started on my journey to learn about innovation and also become an innovation consultant probably 20 25 years ago i met a ceo a british ceo working in a semiconductor factory where we were trying to become consultants for their innovation program and he sort of turned around to me and said we have lots of patents here but i don't see much happening out of the patents what is the issue here are we not innovating and what is innovation and this is a definition i gave him many many years ago and i think it's a very apt in a definition of innovation very simple it's all about value and who creates the value the people who work in them and once you create value you have create you have reached an innovative activity now let's talk about innovation innovation can be new products new methods of production opening of new markets and new sources of supplies 
will assume great importance for sustaining competitive advantages. This is what organizations can do. Besides new products, innovation will be about new business models. So if you take Yahoo, Zoom, and so on, and not Yahoo, sorry, Ola, yeah, even Yahoo, Zoom, Ola, Flipkart, they are, they are all working on new business models, market collaboration, and new designs. The pace of innovation will be much faster today with technology growing at rapid speed. As new innovation takes place, the self life of the product becomes even shorter. So this is very, very important for startups, organizations, and whatever you're doing, this is very crucial. Even in the field of education, you need to be innovative. Otherwise, your courses go out of fashion or out of interest if you don't keep innovating your courses. Now, let's take a look at the two very crucial words in this journey, innovation and invention. What are the two differences? Again, we have made it very simple. Innovation is something new, but not necessarily it's got commercial value. Money is converted to invention. Innovation is not necessarily new, but has been applied to have commercial value or it's needed. We are very clear here. Innovation does not only talk about making money, it can also change people's life. The biggest, the important word here, creating value and innovation is converted to money most of the time because it makes people's lives better. So that's very, very important. So the creating value, you might not be converting money, that's fine. But most of it, what we're saying, it is actually making it of value. Now let's look at how you will look at innovation. It's not like a project. You have to be managing the presence that's lean as change in, in projects. And you have to selectively forget the past that's non-liner changes and creating the future. These are important when you're working in innovation. And now let's look at the process. We start off with the thinking process. We work through the capability we have, we go through matrices, and then we try and resource. And this is some time back in an article by Ernst and Young. In the last two decades, company felt the most surefire way to maintain a competitive advantage in industry was through quality of price. However, the research showed that innovation is one of the most valuable differentiators for sustaining competitive advantage. That's why you see companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, they spend lots and lots of money in innovating new products and services. So that's where the company's advantage of sustaining comes along. Now, mountain climbing is a little like innovation. Going to the top is tough and we all talk about it, but coming down a mountain is more dangerous, but people only focus on the tap top. Coming down, no one cares, but there's a lot of danger. Just like Thomas Edison said, 1% inspiration and 99% is exploration. So innovation is a bit like mountain climbing. If you create value, people remember. If you don't create value, nobody cares. The types of innovation. I put up this slide many, many years ago before people agreed there's three levels, but today it's openly agreed there are three levels. So let's go through the major, major types of innovation. We have product, we have services, we have process engineering, process innovation, we have strategy innovation that will fall under services, and we have people, how people deliver innovation. So you have four types of innovation, and they are in three different levels. Incremental means little by little, radical is huge changes, and breakthrough is completely new. So these are the three levels of innovation working under the four categories of four types of innovation. Now, innovation is actually a discipline. You need to be disciplined. You need to approach it as a discipline. And it's very comprehensive. It's not just a one-day job. It's very comprehensive. It has to include the organization. 
systemically and continue to search for new opportunities. Innovation must evolve everyone in the organization. Innovation, most importantly, must be customer focused. Continuing, must differentiate between creativity and innovation. We'll talk about it in the next slide. Companies send people to facilitate breakdown session. Often, this is just great for team building. It comes back with low results. People have a great enjoyment, dinner, drink, enjoy, play, have fun. Not that is no good. It's great for team building. But when people come back, they do nothing about what they've spoken over the weekend. So we need to think about all this. People come back, as I said, with lots of ideas, but none are implemented because innovation is not looked as a discipline. Companies will say there are too many ideas, but will not have a, a place where to separate winners and losers. So places like Disney, Disney, they have little boxes within their organization where people put in their ideas and they are gone through. And every so often, the leaders pick out innovations and reward people. So this is something very, very important to do. Ideas which bring great value to customers also improve bottom line, because if you make their life better, they're going to buy from you. So that's innovation. Things which separate innovative companies are, there, are only their skills, knowledge, commitment, and the people who manage them. Must teach innovation so people can understand how to think through their ideas and how to align with company goals and bottom line, just like anything else. We get better by practicing and making mistakes. Now, in, we just now spoke a little bit about creativity and innovation. Now, let me just tell you why it's important for us to be able to do this. The first thing is creativity, is the input. You always have to have good input to get reasonably uh, good outcome. So the importance of inputs are ideas, daydreaming, observing, brainstorming, and the portion which links innovation and creativity is the cre screening criteria of evaluations, which most often most of us don't have in place. So it's crucial to get this in place to get better innovation. It comes out better results, faster, cheaper, and aesthetic. Very, very important. Now, review. Howard Professor Clayton Christensen argues that business schools are reviewing innovation due to the emphasis on IRR and RO and results in poor business structures. Companies such as Dell have now outsourced nearly all aspects of design and production. As a result, they have lost a lot of their creativity, talent, and capability. Now, continuing. Return this number places emphasis on making as much money while investing in as few assets. You probably have heard things like light assets, doing using other people's assets and so on. So to get better returns, these measures are short-sighted. Do not consider long-term cost of losing knowledge and innovation. This is what the professor says. But even if the professor is right about companies becoming less innovative, is it really business school's fault? Going goes much deeper than being what is taught in the business in class. Is it a problem with corporate culture? Most likely, we need to explore that. We must encourage companies to shift away from short-term profits to focus on innovation. And sadly, many, many startups are falling in the press criteria first criteria of trying to look for short-term profit. And as such, they have a very short span of life. So it's important they balance the two, which I will speak about later this morning. Companies should provide goods, not jobs. If a job, if a company can deliver better products more cheaply to customers, they should do so, should focus on long-term capability. However, outsourcing knowledge base is always dangerous. Then we talk about open innovation in another, it's another altogether a different, different topic, which we'll speak about in another day. Business functions by focusing on making money, national development is not their property. Now, moving forward, companies such as Apple that focus on innovation are excelling. As you know, it's, it is today the world's most valued company, all because they have outperformed 
vast majority of their response, people are appreciating them because of the fantastic innovations they come up with. Companies should focus on long-term profit. Emphasis should be on knowledge and creativity. In the long run, innovation will lead to better performing stocks. Now, building the ecosystem, we need government as always to help us keep funding. And this is what this program has been done, funded by the government of India to help build the ecosystem. Universities like yours do R&D, military and industry apply technology. So all these are important players. What are the public policies we need to look at? Companies are moving away from basic research. So universities and government will need to move in and industry must then commercialize these with the business model. Universities need to be funded by government. Universities need to publish paper to stay in the forefront of knowledge, science, and technology. Government needs to increase education skill sets. Government needs to provide infrastructure necessary for advanced economy. Government needs to build accelerators. And you and I know government of India has been very proactive in the last decade or so, trying to address some of these public policy issues. And return on, in, on innovation investment is a core portion of innovation profit profitability. Very important for us to calculate and implement projects and see the returns given that forecast of revenue growth and cost saving is made. Now let's take some of these very, very large organization who sort of fail to look at innovation. If you take a look at BlackBerry, we did this case study many, many years ago when I was doing my Canadian tour of lectures. At that time, BlackBerry was not yet losing it yet. They were about to just lose. So we came up with this and said BlackBerry was one of the first companies to launch a true smartphone, dominated the market in the early days. They targeted business and then encouraged the BlackBerry to business to other markets. Now, between June of 2008, the share price dropped from $140 to $9 US dollars. And the market share dropped between that period from 19% to 11.7%. You could argue that a lack of innovation was the key. A company set in its way didn't adopt to Apple or Android. So analyzing it, it could be argued that the lack of emphasis on innovation was the key. Problem, BlackBerry stopped responding to the fast change need of consumer and market. Their operating system became dated, outdated rather while everybody else hardware was catching up. So this is some of the issues they had. Moving forward, some innovative thoughts. BlackBerry could have partnered people like Microsoft to push Windows 8, could have built a modified Android OS tailored for business, could have focused on building mobile applications to be sold across platforms, could have partnered with computer manufacturers such as Lenovo to build special package syncing, et cetera. All this was difficult. Now, take a look at Apple in 1997, when Jobs returned as CEO, the company was nearly bankrupt. The product line of focus on computers and accessories. The company had lost most of its market share to Microsoft, but the rebound came. Jobs brought back focus on style. He also pushed for new operating system that is both stable and easy to use. Apple began to move into the consumer electronics, iPod was the first to come. And as you know, they had put thousands of songs in a tiny little uh, piece of device. And most of these songs you could buy for 99 cents. And who would have thought that would have taken off the online music? Today, none of us buy records, none of us buy cassettes. We are all using online music. And it's almost literally so cheap to get thousands and thousands of this. So a great innovation. We are looking at Android. Just as BlackBerry was peaking in 2008, Google launched the Android system, free operating system available to phone the developers. Position improved. Today, you know, Google's Android phones are out there doing it all. Now Google focused on software and hardware developers focus on developing high quality hardware has emerged as the largest smartphone operating system in the world. 
the last count it was holding 43% of the global market is probably holding a lot more. Analyzing this, RIM found a winning formula, but the time changed, they did not adapt. It was one of the best phones for email, absolutely brilliant. And many, many people used it. As you know, even President Obama used to have a BlackBerry phone, which he could only use for email. They had disabled everything else on the phone and he could only use it for, for email. On, and how amazing that device was at that time. Apple suffered years of losses, but was able to use innovation to rebound. Android used both innovative software and an innovative business model to gain this. And we talk about fresh, we talk a little bit about our own self, a small organization. How do we go about this? So we have an option. One, to focus on bottom line, focus on innovation. However, the option, the third option is balance the two. So you would ask which option and then a company should apply. So you focus on the bottom line, small, and you have no funds, fast moving and changing products. You focus on innovation. If you're big and you have funds, slow moving and high changing products. Balance the two is the ideal solution for those who are not large enough like us. And what is innovation related to bottom line? It has to give you revenue from your new products. There must be increase as you introduce new products and services into the market. It has to decrease costs. It has to give you revenue obtained from the introduction of these. So these are some of the important things. You need to look at innovation related to the bottom line. And you need to also look at revenue received from sales, changing the relative market. Has it done any for anything for you? Number of new products, number of innovative ideas, which came from employees of the company during a period. And you need to ratio between total number of innovative ideas and number of innovative ideas actually implemented. Very important. Time spent during submission of an innovative idea and start of the project. Number of customers considering your company innovative versus total number of customers and innovation index. Some of the mistakes in evaluating innovation are these five. Having too many indicators, just like anything else, you have too many examinations, you can ruin. So we need to control this. And innovation cannot be managed like a project because things change. So they don't have A, B, C, D. So you need to be very, very cautious. Next is innovation index are not integrated in the performance. So that has to be done. Focus on cost saving and cost and focus on past events. These are some of the mistakes. Now, power startups bring to the community. Startups have the agility and specificity, unlike large organizations. They are quick to reiterate and pivot with changes. Startups invest in innovative for future and hold the power of disrupting markets. As you know, most of the larger organizations acquire smaller startups because the innovation happens faster, quicker, with less red tape in smaller organization because making decision is made by only a few and not by levels of communications and levels of approval and power to deploy and fast attraction of innovation implementation. Tech startups to play a huge role in innovation for this quarantine economy. Corporates might have to share the attitude, you benefit, I lose, and end up, we both win. Now, looking at innovation, we had said it's irritating, it's irresistible, it's interesting, but businesses need it. Now, we're going to look at some of these other innovations. An initial idea, plus a willingness to engage in difficult work, plus customers are willing to buy your idea. This is what is important. So if you take a look at this innovation or invention. So the Motorola phone was an invention. The Apple iPhone was a, was an invention, uh, sorry, innovation. Yes, yeah, similarly, which is innovation, which is in, invention. If you see on the right-hand side, the electric car was an invention. And you look at the Uber, which is now today running, is an innovation. So important for you to look at these things. And now here, if you look at innovation of invention, the microchip, microprocessor was an invention. And 
the other side, the computer, of course, the innovation. And again, looking at some of these Facebook, uh, the web, the World Wide Web was an invention and Facebook was an innovation, important. And you look at here, which was an innovation, which was an invention. You see on the right hand side, which is an invention. On the left side, it was an innovation. So where Nokia went wrong? Nokia, a company founded in Finland, was the first to create a cellular network in the world. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Nokia was a global leader. People like me, before moving on to BlackBerry, were only using Nokia phones. And then we moved on to BlackBerry, and now to the cheaper Chinese Android phones, because they can equally do so much. So it's all about creating value and innovation. They were global leaders. With the arrival of internet, other mobile companies started out understanding how data, not voice, was the future of communication. So what happened to Nokia is no secret. And Apple and Android crushed them. They didn't grasp the concept of software and fo focusing on hardware. And many of companies in this part of the world focus on product development and they forget. They forget on the service and delivery, which and often people who are in panels in government granting panels often ignore service companies who are actually delivering top class innovation compared to product innovation and fail to raise money because all is about product innovation in this part of the world. So let's learn from Apple and Android. They did a fantastic job on the soft part, which is a service and delivery. Nokia mistake was the fact that they didn't want to lead the drastic change in user experience. Why do people spend thousands and thousands of rupees on iPhone? Because they enjoy the user experience. So very important. Now looking at the failure, unable to translate all that R&D spent into products that people actually want to buy. Product, prominent engineering focus, I needed more marketing survey. Development processes was long dominated by hardware. Engineers and software experts were marginalized, overestimating the strength of its brand. The high tech era has taught people to expect constant innovation that companies fail behind consumers that quickly quick to punish them. Another example in the search engine business look at Yahoo compared to Google. So, very important. Google had continued to innovate and innovate. And today, you know, Google is one of the most valued companies in the world. So innovation pays, pays and pays. Bringing you to almost completion of my lecture this morning. This is now talking about the biggest communication problem is that we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. So we keep saying, and I keep saying in many of my lectures, startups should solve problems. They should not be fitting solutions into problems. That's not your job. Your job is to find solutions to problems. And hence, many of the startups fail because of that. Now, my next slide asks you, what is the next? You identify your key takeaway from this lecture. How does it relate to you? Where are you going to share it with others from this lecture? This is how you contact me at any time, my email, my mobile number, and there are some books on Amazon. If you key in my name, you'll get these books. And there's a YouTube channel which covers primarily right now, when I have time, we have uploaded on one of my favorite topics of incubation and innovation. So you'll see a series of lectures in that YouTube channel as well. So with that, I'm going to stop speaking and I will be happy to take questions from the audience if there is any questions. I think there's no questions at the moment. So I'm happy to, uh, to listen to any of these questions. Any questions? Participants, you can raise your hand or you can write the question and answers. And anyone, Anubhav Sharma, I'm unmuting you.
Mr. Anubhav, your talking is permitted. You can unmute and ask your question. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Anubhav, you can yes, ask. Please. Ask me, please. Go ahead. I can't hear you. Mr. Anubha, you can uh, write if you have some issues with your mic. You can write in question and answer it. It's below. Can innovation be trade or is it inbuilt culture? No, we talked about innovation just now. I'll answer it live. As we talk, as we talked about it during my lecture, I had said it's a discipline. So there are methodologies to make people think creatively, have a screening process, and come up with a in it. In, in, in innovation. Now, yes, of course, it's a culture has to be built for the organization, but it can be taught at the organization for companies to build that into a culture. So hope that answers that question. So in which type of innovation you will keep business innovation? Is it strategy? Business innovation strategy is business, so yes. It's, it's not actually called a business innovation, it's called a business model, which comes under in a, a strategy. Next one, please. So there is one question. Yes. I will I look at it, don't worry. I look at it. How to enhance academic innovation in India? Okay, I'll I'll say it like. It depends what you talk about. What do you mean by academic innovation? Are you talking about the courses we teach in, in the college? Are you talking about where how are we going to make our students more innovative? How are we going to make our professors innovative? So it all depends on what do you mean by academic innovation. So maybe you can tell me exactly what you're looking for. Sign up, AP out, what is site? Are you talking about companies? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say India is less. India is number three in the world for, in terms of startups. And most of the startups are coming from academic institutions. We may not be achieving many, many things out of it yet, but we surely are trying. There are, there are reasonable amount of innovative startups coming out of colleges. Yes, we are still at very early stages. But that's also because people who teach, people who run in incubation, accelerators, also don't have any experiences. So that itself makes it difficult for people. So that's where we are stuck. The people who manage them and teach them are probably not themselves able to teach or guide. So we are having, especially our incubators, are mostly not run by people who know what they're doing. Very few incubators in this country are run by people who know what they're doing, unlike North America, where most of the incubators and accelerators are run by former entrepreneurs. Okay, next question. Product audit research or basic research to be encouraged? See, this is these are questions are very loaded you can't say you only encourage basic research, then how will you come up with, if you only encourage basic research, then you will have no products coming out. If you only encourage on product, 
there will be no new research comes out. So you need to balance the two between what you're good at. So some people in the organization will do basic research. Some people in the organization will do applied research, not necessarily product. Applied research can be, as I said, strategy, business models, which come under those. They come under product, they come under service. So you have to divide your organization, your academic institution into both. And what is the basis of academic institution is to come up with new, new knowledge. And new knowledge is often not applied yet. They are basic research, so we need both. Any other questions? Okay, there's, yeah, there's one more there. <laughs> See, do we need to focus at high end or low end? What is the definition of low end and what is the definition of hard end? It's all entirely up to you how you decide. And in many numbers, what does that mean? I don't know. Anything else? Oh, there's some more. The definition of small and big are arbitrary. It's very difficult to your small could be my big, my big could be a small. So I think we cannot be defining innovation as small and large. It all depends what you're doing and what you want to do. And it's, it's not about numbers. It's about making sure the innovations convert to create value. If they don't create value, then what's the point in saying I have 10 innovations if they haven't created any value? So I think number is not your focus, it's to creating value is what you need. Any other questions, Shaswat? If nothing, we can maybe take a break. Yes, sir. So participants, we are taking a break and we will resume our second uh, lecture of this session at 11 a.m. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Meet you. you all at 11.
uh, welcome back welcome back sir so participants are here and uh, i think we can start our session sir Sorry, I'm just getting this. Uh, okay, so just on mute. Okay, sir. Yeah, your screen is visible now, sir. Okay, so we are back. Yes, you please go the typing and. MVPs. So we're going to look at this for the next half an hour, 35 minutes or so. Now, again, just like this now, please take some time, uh, write down on jot down what would you like to achieve in the next half an hour, 45 minutes under this topic of POC, prototype, and MVP. So I keep quiet for 30 seconds. Okay, let's dive into the topic. Proof of concept versus prototype versus minimal viable product. Many companies struggle to decide which of these they should look at. Is it proof of concept, prototype, minimal viable product, or a combination is the right way to approach. So it's important for us to understand and carry out these three methods of product validation properly. So this can significantly improve the chances of winning an investor, buy-in, and acquiring funds, reducing project time cost, as well as establishing longevity in your product market. So let's start with proof of concept. What is it? It's primarily tells you the approach. Is this idea feasible? You develop a POC is the quickest and most accurate way to validate or invalidate your assumption about your target user and product concept. So this would be the first thing you would do is to have a proof of concept. Once your proof of concept gives you the response, you will then move on to your prototype. How will this pro product work? This is where you built your prototype. It is a form of user research to validate the strategic design direction of a product. A prototype is a primary, is a preliminary visualization of a working prototype, working products. Prototype builds an understanding of which helps test how the customers will use and what their reactions will be. Using the prototype for usability testing gives you enough time to make changes to critical design issues before the product reaches development and it's too late and too expensive to make changes. And the next one is called a minimal viable product. And here you look at what are the product's core functionality and value proposition. A MVP is a minimal and usable form of complete product to be released and tested. The MVP development method allows your team to learn how the products target users experience and how would they respond to your core business purposes using the insights and learning from real users you then allocate your time effort and budget to areas that you have to improve and satisfy the objective of your business building an mvp is a iteration process designed to identify user pain points and determine the proper functionality to these. So I have given you a very quick differential between the three of them. So now let's dive in to look at each one of these a little bit in more depth. What is a POC? POC is typically small. It's an internal validation project. You may not go any further 
after doing a POC. The POC is approach to product validation is about demonstrating the functionality and variability, whether a particular idea is flexible to develop or not. POC is also an excellent method of sharing knowledge internally. It also gives you a decision whether to carry on or not. Is it taking up time? Is it taking up too much effort? It tells you yes or no. If the POC proves that concept wouldn't work, you would then find another solution from the same starting point. You create POC is particularly important. The concept doesn't exist in the market or to differentiate the concept from competitors products. There are certain types of products that already dominate the market, for example, messaging apps. So you need to ensure that what you're doing is going to be adopted or people want to use this product. So it's important for you to do a proof of concept. Developing a product with heavy competition doesn't require proof that the idea is feasible, but to build a user base. So you know the idea works, but will you be able to build users? That's where, again, the proof of concept will help you. The product needs to include a unique feature set to maintain apart from similar concepts. That's what a POC is. What is a prototype? Now, while a POC shows a product concepts can be done, a prototype shows how it will be done. There are complex methods of doing prototypes, but in most development, a prototype typically starts with a sketch or a paper interface and involves an interactive model that resembles the final product. With today, plenty of software out there, you can always do a simulation and look at your prototype. The purpose of the prototype is to communicate the product design and navigate its flow. Prototype is a valuable exercise which results in visualization of the product and to demonstrate to the user how it works. Naturally, there will be errors in prototype, but discovering these errors helps you build a better product. And it's usually user centric. And prototype is a center of design thinking. And often the prototype processes will expose new ideas and confirm the best directions. And it helps you develop cyclic activities. It helps you fix problems to have a better prototype. What are the benefits? There are many benefits of working with an interactive model before reaching the final product. A prototype keeps the user at the forefront of the design process and involves stakeholders in exploring new ideas for development. So let's go over a few of these benefits. The first benefit is to identifying your idea and improving your product. This is why the prototype is important. You validate an early concept and provide opportunity for the exploration of new ideas early in the development. So it's important for you to do this. During the prototype phase of design thinking process, user testing can help identify possible improvements to make before the product is complete. A prototype is the product foundation that is continuously improving until the product meets business goals and its marketability. Testing a product will uncover new ideas and help you extremely to get a more profitable product on the road. And it's also cost efficient. You start working on your project early, so you save costs in the long run. It's far less expensive to solve problems at the beginning and then at the end. So these are some of the important things in terms of cost. In terms of client and stakeholder involving, you in prototype, it's beneficial to improve your potential stakeholders in the planning process. As much as possible, stakeholders need to have a co-ownership of the project design, idea, and design. For example, developers think a particular design is appealing, but the concept is technically difficult and time consuming prevents them from experimenting with alternative solutions. At the same time, the stakeholders might want to implement other components which align more closely with the long-term strategy of the project. Or maybe the marketing department already did market research on the entire different set of users. When the most relevant stakeholders are involved, prototyping phase, you start to get a broader perspective and you ensure spending your time and money more efficiently. And to sum up, it's important to involve stakeholders for several reasons. First, 
for you to help collect all the information. We've already talked about that in the first set of lectures this morning, creating value. So how do you do that? Talking to an investor, your stakeholders, you involve them, helps ensure research makes the most impact, working with the right people, establishing support, securing funds for time and resources for each necessary design. You will know you haven't done the same research twice. So this is something important for us to do. Now let's look at the viable product. Prototype often influenced your MVP and the two work together to create a successful end product. An MVP is a minimal form of your product which will give you enough input if the market wants it or not. And the risk of developing more or less than you need is why validating your product assumptions. Instead of building a full set of product, you build a minimal wire product and you go out there and you learn and learn and you add other features on top of your core features. So this is something very, very important to do. Over time, the learning that comes from an MVP defines, defines your product map and guides the evaluation of your product. And the outcome of this, you get an MVP, which gives your product a viability, it gives you assumptions, it gives you usable usability, and important, your product can only go anywhere if there's a market demand. So your MPV will help you make these discoveries. And on top of that, MPV provides immediate value while minimizing development costs. Ultimately, an MVP allows you to fill a product with minimal features and eventually build it out to create a better, more polished product with leveraging users' intelligence to make the best decision possible. With every release, the product evol evolves to maximize your return on investment and move forward to a more fully developed product. What are the benefits? Today's most successful products start as something much simpler than they are today. Products like Uber, Instagram, and Spotify, for example, are all, all mature products. They are the result of years of development and large amounts of capital. Developing a product of similar scope requires a lot of time and large investment. There is where an MVP comes into play. An MVP provides you immediate, valuable, fast, minimal cost, and above all, shows you how is the most suitable direction for further developing. What does an MVP entails? It can be very subjective differently from object organization to organization based on your business need, industry you come from. If you are from in the medical business, healthcare, your MVPs could be different and people who are doing software, they could be different. So all this needs to be taken into account and it can be quite complex as the industry standards. Nevertheless, there are major benefits in choosing and reiterating in any line of business. And now a core set of functionality to test. Here you are testing a set of functions to ensure that your product is delivering those and there are people wanting it. Primarily here you are testing your key hypothesis. Again, it's another cost-effective way. It reduces your cost. So you don't have to spend hours and hours on doing things without knowing there is enough people out there to pay for this. So you don't have to keep on spending money and not having income. So this could be one way to do this. And again, as we spoke earlier, it is reiterative process, driving product evaluation. Since an MVP entails going to market, with core functions and functionality. Yeah, you're actually going into market to testing your initial user base to gain insight into what works and doesn't work. And often this is missing. So the product fails because we haven't done a proper MVP study to see whether it works. So by doing this, we increase sales and also the exact budget we will need for the next definition. Now, looking at these three, a POC will provide a definitive yes or no answer. So you want to continue or not want to continue, a POC will tell you. Once you have decided there's a viability, you will build a prototype to show how it's done. Once you have done it in the bench, you will then take it to the market with the MVP. It's a little more longer away from prototype. So you will start to work on this. 
Now the next question he asks, which method is best? Of course, this is a very big question. These three methods are quick and cost-effective ways to validate your product. However, they have many other added benefits, including eliciting new ideas and areas of improvement from clients and stakeholders. Clients and stakeholder involvement in your product is actually the most crucial part of you building a product or service. If they are not involved, you won't know what is required. And as such, it gives your project a better life cycle. If you want to enhance your product launch and increase the livelihood, this is the way to go forward. Each method is individually advantageous when used properly. Whether testing key from the business or concept early, reading your stakeholders, or validating market. Some best practices for prototype. We need to keep it lean so you don't spend too much money, too much time, so you can get feedback and you can start improving. So that's the first thing to do. Keep it lean and you need to have minimized details, keeping the first point in mind and working at a high level outlet of what you envision your hand product will be. So this is your number two best practice. Three, you need to prioritize features. You never keep on building features. So it's absolutely important to find out which are the first important features to get your product into market. And you will do this. And you use real content. Using place as the copy in your prototype will not give those testing your product and adequate representation what you're doing. So it has to be real, use real stuff. Next, you need to map out your journey, how you're going to build your app, what are you going to do, or a product, depending, sorry, we're talking about mobile products here. So it depends on what you're building, you need to map it up, and you need to test it, and you need to have an acceptance. This is the way you would build a prototype best practices. And the takeaway would be, prototype is an important part of design process. By allowing development teams to work on these and give you the best practices. You not only save money, but you save time, but then you become closer to your idea for a serviceable user-defined product. So this is where it is absolutely crucial for you to work on your prototype. And the step-by-step -step for, for a minimal viable product. Step one, you need to identify your goals, your business and market needs. This is the first step you will do. You need to establish who your competitors are and what they're doing. And then you look at a long-term goal, not short-term. What are you going to do, for example, in a coffee shop chain? You may have a long-term goal of reducing checkout time by 30%. So that would be a long-term goal. Success criteria. You identify how you will do this. So if you achieve this, then you've saved almost a million dollars, for example. So this is what you will do. And we talked about mapping out the users. So you need to look at and consider when you're creating a journey for users. You identify the users, you identify the actions, you identify the end story. That is step number two, very crucial. Step number three. Step number three is showing you the paid and gain map. So you need to show how you are giving the patient, the customer, you're solving their pain and gaining for them. So this is something you need to identify, the user's pain and how you will make them gain by using your activities. And this technique will determine the greatest potential to add value. So the MPV helps you to add value for future releases. And we recommend organization, the pain and gain map into a chart is what a pain and gain chart might look like for a head shop. So now looking at, at this stage, you will be able to discern what features to include in the MPP. So you look at the opportunity statement, you look down at breaking down the features and you prioritize the matrices. After your v MVP, you launch your MVP. It is imperative that you collect feedback from your users, users tell us where the product is likely and ensure market validation. This will help you generate new ideas, grounded in use behavior, which will shape the subsequent behavior versions of your product. It is important to continue to test, learn, and measure your test products. 
This lecture, the abstracts have been used from a blog called Clear Bridge Mobile. Why am I telling you that as good entrepreneurs, good startups, we must give credit to those who have actually done the work initially. So this is an extract from the website Clear Bridge that I have extracted most of the material because I found the material very educative, very simple to follow. It actually tells you the difference between the three within less than 15, 20 minutes, which is amazing. And as such, I have extracted this lecture from that website. And as usual, what is next? Identify your key takeaway. How does it relate to you? And how will you share with everybody? This is how you contact me. I respond to all my messages on a very timely fashion. I'm going to give you a longer than what probably was expected to ask questions. I've only spoken for 20 minutes. So I would like to take more questions the next 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to stop my screen and also going to put my video on. So it gives you a chance to see how I look like, hopefully. The participants. Okay, there is a question. Do you need to think of intellectual property before POC? Yes, you need to think of all this. That is why you're doing a POC proof of concept. And that is why we are saying you do this possibly in paper and you do research and find out. Okay, I answered that. Uh, I am interested in, say, natural dye of textile. How do I validate if my idea is good to translate into my product? You can do a customer discovery by talking to the people you are in this business. Maybe you go out and ask them, what are they looking at? But you don't tell them your product idea. You just find out from them what they're looking. You probably have to do 50 to 100 customer discovery, and that would probably help you to, to prove the concept. Please Part go ahead. Participants, you can ask your questions. You can write, or if you raise your hand, I will unmute you. Any questions? No questions. Oh, if I knew there'll be no questions, I could have done the lecture longer. But anyway, how to validate the success of a eco innovation? All innovations, you, how do you validate? We need to go out and find out whether the users will use them. That's how you know whether it is successful. If the users are not going to use them, and this is a process called customer discovery, you go and ask your customers whether they will take your innovation or they will not take your innovation. Often, you don't tell them the solution. You find out from them what is missing in certain areas before you start building your POC. OK, there's someone who has asked. Okay, maybe we can ask a question to the audience. How many of you go through the process of POC or product, a prototype, or MVP? How many of you actually do that? Anybody would like to share their view? Just raise your hand and then we will unmute you. Very shy audience, huh? Anybody would like to share their experience on product development, what they have done, so we can all learn from each other. Participants, if you have your version of the story to share, you can do. Sir is here to guide you.
it's not matter of what is wrong or right we are just here to share our experiences you can always share your experience anyone want to share the experience or not i'm sure some of you must be building products anyone building products Okay, I guess if nobody want to ask anything, then there's nothing we can do, really. So I was hoping I was hoping people would ask some questions. Yes, sir. So audience, uh, meanwhile, I have shared the feedback form. You can fill same for uh, your attendance and for certificate purpose. But uh, certificate you will get anyway. Don't worry. And uh, for that, you have to fill this form. But till we are live in this session. uh it will be best you can utilize this session to be the fullest any question related to your process or any hurdle you are facing while making the poc while conceptualizing the idea or move taking your idea to next step because there are i think i can see we have our faculty members we have our students as well and most of you are involved with ideation and uh, prototyping different projects work you are taking up okay anyone okay i guess if they don't have any question they can always reach out to us afterwards yeah so if you have any query regarding to this you can reach out to us and uh, you will be more than happy there to... is one question for government oh. support for what okay very good government support for transition of idea there's whole lot of uh, support from government there's people like dst dbt pyrac miti smes so you are not short of uh, people helping you to do these the hundreds of them out there okay maybe hundreds in exaggeration but there's enough of them so there is actually if you go to startup india's website all all the granting bodies who help is there so go up to startup india's website and you will get all the grants available there for different areas there's probably over 100 places you can apply depending on what you are doing so that's important so you can do that and that will help you and they all have calls and and they have closing and opening days some are year long some are only during calls so depending on what you do you will need to then identify the most suitable um what you call um most suitable uh, grant for you to apply and grants are probably good way to start your idea and before going out for huge before going out for external funding because grants are generally they are free in the sense that you don't have to give anything away we can give it another couple of minutes if anybody has anything we can take them if not we can just yeah we are waiting for another couple of minutes if you have any query related to this you can ask don't feel shy you can write or if you want to come on mic you can raise your hand we will unmute you okay i guess we don't have to yes sir so no much ah oh, there's one more question let's see healthcare innovation are bound by rules regulation more than rules yes they are bound by regulation depends if they're not invensive in a way if it is not the uh, invasive it's not so critical if it's invasive then yes you need to get all the safety uh, rules to go and that is why we talk about poc ah proof of concept so before you start you look at the proof of concept and then you will start learning from the able to go okay very good uh
thank you, Anjana. I appreciate that. Uh, Anjana, you can share your experience if you want to share. Should I unmute you? You want to share your experience? Sir, am I audible? Yes, yeah. audible. Yes, please. Sir, actually, we want to learn uh, more, much more thing about this, but uh, because few terms are very, very new for us, that's why we are unable to ask uh, so many questions. So next time we will be able to learn. So uh, the session was very nice, and uh, I, I probably made it uh, too. अभी हमें ये सारी terminology हमारे लिए नई है. Then in future we will be able to ask so many questions because we are curious to know much more things about this, and uh, in future definitely we will ask the questions. Fantastic! The word you use there, curious, it's very good for innovation. It gets you yeah. to innovate. I have probably made the lecture too simple, stick because I have I have been spending years learning these. I didn't want to make it very complicating. I looked at that blog and I thought that. The series of articles there were very useful. Unexpected it from that website because it should not be complicating. Even I learned while doing research for this lecture. The simplicity of POC is basically. Uh, I mean, I I was able. I mean, I have written an article. I have written articles. If you go to the Entrepreneur Magazine online, you will see my articles on the difference of POC, and uh, okay. which I wrote maybe five six years ago. It's still there on the Entrepreneur's website. Entrepreneur Magazine website, so you could read it there. But I thought this blog was very well explained. It clearly defines that POC is just doing things without actually doing anything. Then the prototype is actually making it work, and then finally the MVP is actually getting it validated by the users. So I thought it was very very simply explained. Instead of going into very complex definitions, this blog had done a very good job, and I thought it's good. For me to learn and share with you, and as such, the lecture turned out to be only twenty minutes, twenty minutes instead of forty minutes. But that's fine. It's it's more important to deliver the message, I guess. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I have unmuted uh, Dr. Nithyanand Shastri, and uh, sir, you can share your thoughts. Dr. Nithyanand. you can speak sir okay there is you dr sarthak uh, i am unmuting you if you want to share your views you are allowed to talk sir dr sarthak okay uh then uh, uh we shall conclude sir i'm good I, i mean you can always reach out to me afterwards i'm yeah, definitely sir definitely yeah. sir so so uh thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak i thought it was some, i hope it was some use to it, to the audience and thank you so much for the opportunity thank you sashwat and the team thank you so much sir uh, on this uh, occasion this holiday you spare to us for us and thank you to all the participants who have uh, just uh, uh, are with us in this session and made this session very informative and uh, we will be hosting other future sessions related to these kind of interesting topics and uh, thank you so much muthu sir thank you with us uh, thank we, you we have shared the attendance link you can uh, go to the chat box and fill that form thank you so much sir Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Can I log out? Is it fine? Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Bye to everyone. Bye. So all the participants, you can open the chat box. There is one feedback link. I have not yet logged out. You can fill that feedback link, and then you can just log out from the session.